Hey guys, I'm Abby with Motor City Nerds, and we're going to cover Mayfair Witches Episode 4. Now, I really, really enjoy these last two, and I already got my other review done, and now I'm like, I'm so dumb. I can't believe I skipped doing this one, but the, the tables have kind of turned here, and I'm, I really liked this... Really love the going back to Scotland and seeing that. I really love seeing how this family started. I'm really enjoying that. And I, what I'm really truly enjoying about both this and Interview with a Vampire, and they both do this extremely well, we have a whole other plot going on in the background that we kind of forget about. And so with these witch hunters, I'm real geeked about that. I'm real geeked about that. But yeah, let's get into this. Mayfair Witches, episode four. We got my Alice in Wonderland on. And oh, yeah, do you guys like my Carlotta? inspired hair <laughs> no i just really didn't want to do my hair and then i was like oh we'll just pull it back like that but yeah oh make sure you subscribe we're doing a giveaway for a metallic caraxes funko pop from house of the dragon if you subscribe and leave a comment that will enter you into the giveaway and i think i have a better program now to pick a winner because last time i think it only went off the comments but either way hopefully it works and we'll do that at the end of the month and i'm really excited for it now, if you've been over here on the channel, you know how much I appreciate storytelling with a camera done very well. And one thing that this show and this episode in particular did very well is I loved seeing the Scotland funeral of uh, the original Mayfair witches and that and the original one we're watching the most, the younger one, her mom passes away, right? And her mom had just hit her with this knowledge of like, mm, no, we're kind of not like everybody else and that's why everybody looks at us sideways and yada, yada, yada. But... What I really liked was when the, they were like, this is her true funeral. And we got to see all that. And then we see Rowan going to her mother's funeral. Oh, and just so you guys know, I'm on chapter eight in the books. So it just came out that the woman raising her adoptive mother was a Mayfair. And so I thought that was changed for the show. No, that's, that's in the book. It's just we find out later on farther into the book, not off rip like in the show. But I really like that because we have Rowan's adoptive mother passing and it's very, it's a very matriarch, maternal, it's a women's story. You know what I mean? So we have the adoptive mother passing. We have Rowan losing her, her biological mother. And then we have the flashbacks to Scotland and seeing them lose that mother. And I really loved that this girl could finally, she could finally break down she could finally mourn and grieve the loss of her mother. And I'm really loving all that. And now one thing I do want to touch on really quick. I don't have any evidence to back this up. I should, you guys know how I am over here. I need to look things up before I talk about them and not just spit them out. But the color green, okay? It's, it's used very often in this. It's very bright. It pops. I love the colors. This The way they shoot this is beautiful. It's stunning. And I love the way... If you remember an interview with a vampire, or if you didn't watch it, you should, because it's great. It's the best show on TV right now, I think. I stand by that statement. But when Lestat says, everything's alive. Everything in New Orleans is alive. No matter what you do to it. If you tear the trees down and you build a house, it's alive. There's it With the dew and the water, and he's like, I, I, just the life of the city goes past. It's a bustling city. You know what I'm saying? So this depiction of the Mayfair house, I really love it a lot. Because not only is it a beautiful old Victorian home, and I'm all about it, um... With the color green and mothers and mother nature and women making life, that's a big, huge symbol a lot in TV and movies and on the screen. So I really like that and I like their use of it. But not just that, like I was saying with the funeral, when they go back and they see her mom's actual funeral, you know what I mean? And we have the green of the plants. Everybody's named after plants. Rowan and Cyprian, these are all names after herbs and plants and things like that. So the color green is very symbolic here. And I love the way they use it. But if you tie it back to what Lestat said about New Orleans, this house is constantly... Now, if you live in the South, in New Orleans, because I know there's awesome subscribers that are from New Orleans, and I'm like, oh my God. Uh, that's so, it's just such a cool place. It's just such a cool place. It just seems so awesome. Just everything about it. Historically fun. It just looks awesome. But how do you keep your houses maintained? The humidity's got to gotta jack them up, Right. Is this, how often do you have to get your house repainted? Is this what happens when you become an adult? You're like, how often do you have to repaint that house because of the humidity? But I love that this house depiction is always falling apart and the and the garden's always overtaking it. And it's and yeah, there's a garden in the book and the way it's described, and I love it, and it's very similar. But when you bring it to the screen, that's on the 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 film people, not Anne Rice, you know what I mean? So the way they brought that to life and the house on its own, and it's overgrown with all these living things and the garden and even like i said even it looking decrepit like it's falling apart is a sign of life the whole theme of women and you can create life and mother nature and my mother and my mother before me and the mother before that and i i really love that 
and it's really beautifully done. And what I also really love, and didn't really realize it till this last episode, and Mom started an interview with a vampire, and she's loving it. Um, and I think watching those side by side, it's just nice to have the same universe. How often do we get this? The same universe, the Anne rice -averse. We ain't calling it the Immortal Universe. We're calling it the Anne rice -averse over here. We have this extremely male-driven story, and you know what I mean with the interview with the vampire, and I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Not taking anything away from Claudia and the themes with her, but it's a very male-driven story and what they struggle with and things like that and their sexuality and all that stuff. You can go check out my interview with the vampire reviews. That was so much fun, and thank you all so much for stopping by for those. But with, and then we, then we have this juxtaposition of, okay, this, this feminine story uh, and femininity is not a weakness. And if you know me, you know I love my Sailor Moon and I will always hype her up. I love anything, especially that, that celebrates femininity as a strength. And this show does that very well. And like I said, I'm not taking anything away from Interview with a Vampire. I think it's the best show on TV. I think it's going to sweep the Emmys and it should. Yeah, it's just nice to go, wow, look at a writer who made stories for all different people in all different walks of life and it doesn't you know what i mean it's not that if you're a man you can't enjoy this it's not if you're a woman you can't enjoy interview with a vampire obviously but i'm just saying it's nice it's nice to see and to know that all those stories came from one mind it's it's awesome and especially rereading interview with a vampire and reading the witching hour i just i forgot how beautiful just flat out beautiful of a writer Anne rice was she was a beautiful writer and it, I, this is the way i explain her to people it's like reading poetry without the obnoxious, like, mm -hmm, hoity-toity bullshit in it. You know what I'm saying? It's just beautiful. It's like reading poetry, but without the snarkiness of poetry. Not knocking poetry. And if you like poetry or write poetry, you just know what I mean? There can be, people can be hoity-toity about it. Chill. I, I like poetry just fine. But, yeah, I, I, I'm really... The farther this show goes, the more I'm enjoying it. Especially the last episode. I will say this. I'm really loving the uncle now. <laughs> He made a flip-flop. He made a flip-flop on me. Even though I do think he has some ulterior motives and there's something up with Cortland, I think there's some resentment in Cortland. Does that make sense? I think there's some Cor some Cortland. I think there is some resentment in Cortland that he was born a boy and not a girl. And that's not that he not that it's anything like that. It's just he doesn't get the same recognition that the women in this family do. But he also doesn't have the let's call them responsibilities and other things that go along with that. But I do think there's a little bit of resentment there for sure. And I, I, you guys know me. If you've been over here, you know the, how I feel about my over-the-top gaudiness, and I love it. So that's why I always say it's okay. I, I relate more to Lestat in Interview with a Vampire than I do Louis, but we can still say Lestat has flaws, even though we love this character. Same thing with this uncle. I, I, I'm really loving him. I'm loving his style. I still think he's bad to an extent. But I think it comes from a place of resent. And I do think he genuinely loved Deirdre. So we start off in Scotland and we have that whole flashback going on with the mother's funeral and that all we're done there. Then we have Rowan going, she's staying at Cyprian's. She's having all these dreams of banging him, which I don't really mind because where I'm at in the book right now, we know that Cyprian in the show is an amalgam of a couple characters from the books. And the Michael Curry in the book is, you can t there's like sexual tension without them even meeting yet. And she, oh, they did meet. She saved him. But you guys know what I mean? Like, she's always fantasizing about him and Rowan's always thinking about him and all this. She's like, oh yeah, he was so fine and all this, that, and the other. So, and I love Cyprian's sister. Can we just put that out there? I think she's really funny and I really like her a lot. She's like, I ain't listening to none of this shit and I really appreciate her. But yeah, in the book, we have Michael Curry and that's the Cyprian character. And they're, they're both like thinking about each other in a sexual way. So when we see her having dreams of her sleeping with Cyprian, I was like, okay, no, this this all makes sense. And I and I really like them falling for each other, but in an organic way. I felt like it was very organic. Also, the actor, I'm sorry, I don't know your name, playing Cyprian, he has one of the kindest faces I've ever seen. Doesn't he, doesn't he have a kind face? He just has very kind eyes. Like, and ladies, you know what I'm talking about. He looks like somebody you'd ask for directions. You'd be like, I don't think you're going to murder me. And he just, he looks like a very kind man. I, and he plays this role very well, and I love it. We're going to break this up into two chunks. We'll do Cyprian stuff, and we'll do Mayfair stuff. So in the middle of the funeral, Cyprian's like, I got to go talk to my boss from the town of Masca. And he's got to go talk to this guy that they th is the one, they think it's the one who killed Deirdre. Now, that was gruesome, first and foremost. That was so gruesome. But he realizes that the, 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 elevator was wiped and he doesn't know what's he's never seen anything like that and then we have this guy who it to to the average person it looks like this guy's going crazy or he's tweaking on something you feel me so it looks kind of like that but the, 
then he gets with the Talamasca people and Cyprian shows up and the boss is kind of weird about that. The boss is weird. Now, remember back in the other episodes when all these workers were like, Cyprian, don't get hurt and this and that and we end up finding out more in the next episode but I, I really like that they're all like, no, I'm trying to look, and he's kind of confused by that. Like, what? And then we end up finding more out, like I said, that there were other workers that followed other Mayfairs and nobody knows what happened to them. But Cyprian now is following this Mayfair, and he's kind of in a dan- he's in more of a dangerous position than he knows. I I think, and I think these this boss and these coworkers, I think some of them know how dangerous it is, and they kind of are just like sacrificing him a little bit. And I'm like, that's kind of jacked up. But he says to the boss, "Do you want me to go in cold?" And that just means like, "Do you want me to go in with no information and just do my thing and tell you when I find out, or do you want to give me some information first? So the boss is like, "No, I want you to read him cold. Go go in and and get the information you can get." Uh, and he goes in, and that's when um, this guy ain't having it. He's going nutso, berserko, and snaps his own neck. And that was crazy. Another thing this show is doing extremely well, the use of camera angles. I, I haven't seen anything that's too, like... Sometimes I'll see effects, and I'll go, how did you do that? Like, watching Avatar 2, I was like, this might not be the greatest thing I've ever seen ever, writing-wise, but when it comes to some of these visual effects, I don't know how you did this. And normally I can guess, like, maybe it was this. And that's how I... In this show... They are using basic ass effects and basic ass tricks, and they look phenomenal. They look phenomenal. Their practical effects, their use of just creepy camera angles, like especially in the house. That's what I was telling my mom. I'm like, when we get these slight turns and the house just looks off or slanted, and then we get like the subtle acid trip on the walls. And if you've been there, you know what I'm talking about. It's just subtle, and then it stops. And you're like, there's something unnerving about this. But the way they're doing all that is 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 so well done. But they're sticking to what they know. It's just basics. And I love it. I love it. And I want to hype that up. But same thing with the neck snap and these other effects, like the, the deer draw and all this other stuff. It's like, these are really basic practical effects, and they look fantastic. And they're very disturbing. And they really, really work. When he snapped his neck, I was like, oh my god. And so then we see, like, a uh, apparition of Lasher. And he says something along the lines of, Lasher killed him because he's pissed off. So we still don't know who gave the official go-ahead or was the the trigger man to Deirdre. I think that, I think that, I don't know if he's being set up, but I definitely think they know more than they're telling him. They all know more than they're telling Cyprian. I think that he knows it's dangerous, but I don't, I don't think he knows how dangerous it is. So after Cyprian ends with his boss and all that goes down, he decides to go into the Mayfair archives and check out all their history. And now I really love this. Now this adds to, are they related to Louis? And I'm like, it, it would just be a fun little nod, whatever. But when he was like, the, well, not him, but they were like, which one are you reading? The Dutch side or the Haitian side? I was like, oh my God, we're mixing all types of voodoo and hoodoo and all that together with witchcraft from Celtic lore, which I'm all about, all about it, love it, mix it all together, I love it, but, oh my god, I really like this episode a lot, but Cyprian, he's going through the archives, right, and that's when he gets a photo from Rowan, and it's a key, the key, and he's like, oh snap, I better go find out where you're at, so then he goes off to save her, we love him, I love Cyprian, he's awesome, so yeah, that's what's going on with Cyprian, he goes, talks with work, does work stuff, then Mayfair archives, then after Rowan to protect her, and I love it. But, and I love that he leaves her alone to handle her own shit. Like, th- I love that. You, you, I don't need to protect you all the time, but yeah, maybe having somebody step in for you when you're being uh, uh, seduced by the scary Lasher man, I'll be there, and I really like it. Or Carlotta, or these psychos. But yeah, that's what Cyprian's doing. Like I said, we're just gonna break this up into chunks. We have Rowan waking up at Cyprian's, telling him how nervous he is to go to the funeral, and him and her are going together, and they go. Now, I really loved all of this. The rose petals falling was beautiful. Is this the same church in Interview with a Vampire? Because I think it is. I rewatched the first episode of Interview with a Vampire, and they're vi- it's got the bowl shape. I didn't know if it did, and it did, and I'm like, this is the same church, and I love that, because it's just a little nod. Like, we're in the same area. It doesn't have to mean, like, ooh, you know, all this and that, but it's just, like, it's, it's a fun nod, and I really appreciate that, and I really like it. But I loved when they walk in and everybody's staring at Rowan because she's supposed to be dead. And that pisses Rowan off. She's like, that's why she gets mad at Carlotta later. She's like, what? And she sees her name on the tombstone. And Carlotta's like, meh. And then she finds out about her adoptive mother. So like I said, a lot of mom themes going on this episode. But we have her getting to the funeral. And we get to see all these Mayfairs. And and Cyprian's telling her, like, that one married a Kennedy. And that one did whatever. So these people are all in positions of power and stuff. And he says something like, oh, it's rumored that she's been alive since the Civil War and things like that. And I thought that was really fun and really cool. But everybody's staring at Rowan like, oh, my God. We all thought you were dead. And now it's like this just shook up the whole family because she's going to become a big deal down the road. You know what I'm saying? And I really really like that a lot and how just – and I think that – 
is it Alexandra Daddario? Is that her name? She's really killing it. And I thought she did a really good job of showing, like, I'm pretty tough. She's a pretty tough girl, you know what I mean? But she she's overwhelmed by the amount of people staring and, and what and this and that. But, yeah, her and Cyprian go in, and then they – everybody in the immediate family kind of tries snatching her up, like Carlotta and Uncle Cortland. But I really liked Uncle Cortland coming in, and at first you kind of think, oh, you are really sad, until he cuts a piece of Deirdre's hair off. And I was like, oh, no, this is an ulterior motive. But I do think he genuinely semi-cared about her or at least kind of feels bad, but he is self-motivated. He's working on himself. He's going to look out for number one, him. But I did also really like Uncle Cortland's daughter. I really liked his daughter. I thought she was awesome. And I and you rarely get to... I'm pretty tall. I'm 5'9 almost. So it's like, I like seeing a big tall lady. And his daughter's really tall. And I really liked that actress. And she was kind of just like, I know my role. I'm in the special club of women. But also, you're my dad. And I, I really liked her. She was a fun character. I, I think she's a little snarky and I like her. But she's like... She's the one telling her dad, like, look out for this and look out for that and yada, yada, yada. All while Uncle Cortland's doing some shifty shit. And then we have Carlotta also doing shifty shit. And they're all trying to get to Rowan for different reasons. But everybody else is staring like, oh, my God, who is this person? And they call up the immediate family. And that's when all the rose petals start to fall like Deirdre's still there with them. And I really liked that a lot. And I like that Rowan starts to smile because I think she can feel her mom a little bit. And I, I really, really liked that a lot. Kerfuffle with the flower petals and all that. And Carlotta's throwing a fit. Uh, we see... We see how much Rowan is like just in in awe of of having this family and stuff like that, and and how unsettled she is by why did you tell him I was dead and all this stuff, and they start to go to the cemetery, and that's when Cyprian gets called off to do work stuff, and Rowan gets left alone with them, and that's when we find out that Uncle Cortland is going to show up in at uh, the Mayfair house with and and bust in on Carlotta and her little get together she's trying to have, and I really liked that because I don't know. I, New Orleans does it right, man. That's how I want my funeral to be. I want it to be a poppin' party because I don't know who else has Irish wakes, but we do it big. And you do. You celebrate their life and you drink and you laugh and you have fun and then you all cry hysterically together at random throughout it. But it's a party. It's a party, for sure. And so I really appreciate that and seeing that because I can relate to that. Cortland's making moves. Uh, Cor Cor eh. Carlotta's talking to Rowan at the cemetery and you can tell this is where Rowan really starts getting getting irritated and she meets more members of the family and we see the younger blonde girl who I really like. I think she's genuinely just nice and fun and she's like, oh, finally, somebody who's going to do, who's going to run the family and do some good and you can tell Rowan's like, what the hell is this girl talking about? But I just like her spunky attitude but we do see and like I said, these both, this and Interview with Vampire do a very good job of having a story going on in the background that hasn't hit the forefront yet and that's when we have the creep in the bushes taking photos of her and taking photos of the family. And at first I was like, why did we just turn into the Godfather here? Is it the feds? And then I was like, oh no, it's that creepy burning ladies incel group that's going to harm them. That's that's who it is. And I was just like, oh my God. So that I'm really interested to see. This episode had a lot going on in it. We get through the funeral. Cyprian left. Rowan's left alone. We go to the house. Cortland shows up. Carlotta's pissed off. Uh, and we just get we just get a lot of solo stuff before they all meet together in the front. We have Carlotta talking to Rowan about stuff. We have the cousin... Cortland's daughter taking Rowan to the room and showing her the paintings of everybody. We have Rowan finding out everything is mine. I run the family. What do you mean? So she's finding all that out along with the audience. You know what I mean? And then we have Cortland going through shit upstairs. And I feel like this is genuinely relatable when you're like the family member who's kind of on the outs. So you're just like, I'm going to take something that matters to me. And when he took his dad's pipe, I thought... At first I was like, oh, you're kind of just being an ass. But then I was like, no, that could be something very special to you. And then we hear more about the relationship he had with his dad that doesn't sound so great. But I do think these men have a bit of resentment built up. And I can under I can, I can understand why. I, I can see that. But I still think there's some scheminess going on. But we have him taking his dad's pipe back, lurking around the house, looking around for stuff. Then we uh, maybe there was more to that that he was looking for. Maybe the key. Hmm. And then we have Carlotta, her stuff. We have the family, their stuff. All them meeting Rowan, them all being shocked. Rowan... I really loved this when we get to the front yard and I love polite shit talking. I just love polite shit talking. We don't do that here. We don't do polite shit talking. We just do quick to the point. I'm telling you that I fucking can't stand you. But you know what I mean? <laughs> but I love Southern or just like anytime. Like even when it's like uh, Game of Thrones or something, I'm like, I love polite shit talking. But the South man, you guys have a real good way of being like, I'm telling you to go F yourself without telling you to go F yourself. You know what I mean? And I really, I love that. I love it. There's something nice about it, but still like, oh, snap. They're really teeing off, but in a polite way, so I don't really know how to combat it. So I loved Cortland and Carlotta going at it in the front of the house. And if you look, we have Carlotta with Rowan by her side, and we have Cortland with his daughter by her side. Now, the daughter made a really, halt the brakes for a minute, or hit the brakes for a minute, not halt the brakes, hit the brakes for a minute. We had, I really liked that daughter telling Cortland, Cortland's daughter tells him, don't worry, he'll pay for hurting Deirdre. 
I've seen it. And he's like, oh, okay. So we're going to find out who, who killed her because they're going to get punished. And I was like, that's interesting. And then I was like, oh yeah, you'd be in the, the witch group, wouldn't you? We get to the front yard. We have her standing by her dad's side and Rowan unknowingly standing at the side of her aunt. And I really liked when the aunt kind of gives up and sits down and Rowan's like, I really ain't about this. I'm not on nobody's side. I'm just trying to figure all this out right now. But he drops bombs on Rowan and then everybody leaves. And then Carlotta is like, we're going to have dinner together. And then she sends the staff away. And that's when I was like, something bad's going to happen. And prior to that, Rowan is in her room and she drops the rosary Carlotta gave her. And Carlotta sees that. And I think that's, my mom made a really good point. She goes, that's where she made the decision to, to take Rowan out. And I was like, no, I think you're right, after rewatching it. So she drops the rosary. Carlotta sees that on the floor and sees her holding the Lasher necklace, the Lasher leash. That's when she's like, I think that's when Carlotta was like, no, I'm, I am, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take out my niece. Great niece, whatever it is, niece. And then she tells her to come down for dinner. She's wearing the key, not the rosary. And Carlotta sends the staff away. Now, that guy was giving me mad Shining vibes, just the way he looked. I was like, you look like Grady from The Shining, and it's creeping me out. But then the staff gets sent away. I was like, okay, whatever. But that's when I knew something was up. I was like, she's going to do something bad because why would you send away all the witnesses? She tries to burn down the house and then tries to stab Rowan. But in this time, uh, Cyprian has shown up. And first he shows up and he's looking at the house and he's debating what to do. And he's texting Rowan and she's not answering. So he just runs up in the house. When Cyprian got stabbed, oh my God, I was so upset. I was like, no, no, that's horrible. But I, 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 I want to know. I, I. That's the thing. These shows do such a good job of keeping everything so close to the chest that I'm like, I really can't guess. Like, that's why I started reading it again. I was like, man, I really, I want to finish this book, but now I really just want to know, like, what's going on here? This is crazy town. But we get Cyprian getting stabbed, Rowan freaking out. She's kind of, and they do describe this in the book quite often of like, she looks like she's being kissed. She looks like she's doing that. She's really enjoying it. Like every time she's touching the, the necklace and they're talking about Deirdre, it's Rita. That's who I was reading earlier, Rita's character was saying, no, the way she was touching and the way she was moving, it was like they were, somebody was there with her, like kissing her and stuff. So I think Rowan and everybody else is doing a very good job of depicting that for sure. But that's a, a thing throughout the books. So I'm like, no, that's, that's there. But Rowan's like all up on this key, you know? And th I think that's what disturbs Carlotta. And yeah, I think that's what sent her over the edge. But then, like I said, we have the stab coming in, we have Cyprian going down and we have Rowan panicking. But I really did enjoy this episode. And like I said, there was just more like bigger themes I wanted to talk about, like the mom stuff and the color green and things like that. But this episode did have a ton of info in it. It really did. So I might do a longer in-depth thing, but I did record my review for the next episode first, like an idiot. So I'm about to upload that and upload this. And yeah, subscribe, comment, share. Make sure you check out the channel. I, I really appreciate it a lot. Oh, if you want to get into the giveaway... Uh, for the Caraxes Funko Pop, just leave a comment of anything. Remember, Penguin Gang, just leave just leave a penguin emoji down below. I really appreciate it. Subscribe, comment, share. It really helps me out a lot. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm on TikTok. I'm on all the stuff. It's down below. I'm Abby with Motor City Nerds. My dog just... Hobart, you're so damn big, man. I love you.